maybe one of the more quotable quotes in Scripture, uh, comes uh, this weekend from St. Paul when he says, For when I am weak, then I am strong. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And it's quotable not just because it is true. It's quotable because of just how counterintuitive that is. When we are weak, we are strong. Or at least that possibility exists for disciples of Christ. In my years at St. Meinrad, I had the wonderful opportunity uh, to get to know many of the monks. And one monk that I didn't really get to know, but we all knew by reputation, and had been uh, the bearers or or had had received many conferences from him, was the former Archabbot Lambert Riley. Uh, An Archabbot Lambert, an Archabbot is just simply the superior of the house there. Uh, Archabbot Lambert was a character, is a character, remains to this day a character. But he apparently wasn't always a character. I remember once hearing a talk where Archabbot Lambert was kind of recounting his years and how he became an Archabbot and all the work that he did in the house prior to it. And it was on this particular scripture passage that he was kind of telling us his story. Archabbot Lambert came to St. Mindred, like many do, very uncertain, not really knowing what they're getting themselves into. But he was very drawn to the Benedictine life at St. Mindred. He was very drawn to the ideal of prayer and work, that that's what your life revolves around, prayer, work, and that you live with the community of brothers. And he didn't like being out in front of people. As his years in the monastery went on, and he, after he had made solemn vows, he was really just hoping to have a job, and they all have jobs, um, not necessarily like uh, a layperson might have a job, but he w- just wanted to work somewhere in the background, administration for the monastery or seminary, or doing some manual labor job. And one day, his archabbot calls him in, his superior calls him in, and he says, Lambert, I want you to become the retreat master here at St. Minor. And so that job as retreat master entails basically that you just lead retreats from now until you die. Your job is going to lead retreats. Any guests, any groups that come here and they want to retreat, you're the guy we point them to. You will lead retreats for people. And he said he just about vomited when he heard that this was going to be his job. Because he had a deathly fear of being in front of people. He hated to be in front of people. And not only that, he was very opinionated. And he was very brash. And he would just say it like it is, and he didn't care if he offended you. And so someone who doesn't like to speak in front of groups of people, someone who's brash, and someone who doesn't care if they offend you or not, aren't really good ingredients for public speaking and for leading retreats, especially when that person or that group is supposed to be growing closer to Christ. The retreat retreat master runs the risk of pushing them further away from Christ. And so... His point was that this was a weakness of his, a tremendous weakness. And he said for years, every time he got up to lead a retreat, he would puke, he would vomit. And he did offend hordes of people, including cardinals in the church. He had become such a popular retreat master at St. Minor that even cardinals, the princes of the church, would ask him to come lead retreats for them. And he called them some pretty horrible names, offensive names, 
had one point that he loves to brag about. But he became such a powerful and strong leader of retreats that even St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta would have him to India once a year to lead retreats for her and her missionaries of charity. When I am weak, then I am strong. I hope many of us have had opportunities to take those little inventories like strength finder inventories. You know, whether it be your strength might be public speaking, whether it be administration, whether it be just organizing, whether it be just in a background and supportive, whatever your strengths might be, I hope that we have all had opportunities to take strength finder tests and understand better what God has blessed us with. Because it's important that we never kind of shove under the bed or put the lampshade over what God has blessed us with in terms of strengths. But I wonder sometimes if God is as concerned with our strengths as he is our weakness. I wonder sometimes if he is not more concerned and more desirous of us understanding our weakness, understanding our faults, because it is in that that we can no longer rely on our limited human power, our limited human strength. But there is infinite room for the power and strength of our infinite God. I think sometimes God is more desirous of us putting into service our weakness and not to set aside our strengths, but to have courage and to say, I'm not good at this, or I'm going to be terrible at that, or I'm a sinner in this way. And as Archabbot Lambert did, as St. Paul talks about today, we lay that weakness down at the foot of the cross in prayer. Where the ultimate statement of human weakness, death, was conquered by our all-powerful God. We are not afraid to use our strengths. I hope we're not afraid to use our strengths. But even more so, we should not be afraid to allow God to use our weakness because when we are weak, then we are made strong by Him.